Hi, so this week's video is a bit of a follow-up to last week's video about sample rates in Cubase and how to set, change and convert them. Because somebody made a comment on that video and I thought it was interesting enough to make a whole separate video about. So let's go. So since this video is a bit of an addendum to last week's video, I'll try to keep it short, promise. But last week's video was about how to control the sample rate in Cubase and what to do if you got an audio file in your project with the incorrect sample rate. Now if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it at the end of this one. But somebody made a very interesting comment on that video, being that you could also convert an entire project from one sample rate to another. For example, convert it from 44k to 48k or maybe even to 96k. And you may want to do that, for example, to take advantage of the higher fidelity of processing at that higher sample rate. Or maybe you need to deliver something in 96k output format, then it makes sense to do that conversion early. Or maybe even, and this is a very current topic, if you record it at 44k, but you want to make a mix in Dolby Atmos in Cubase, which requires 48k. So in that case, you want to convert your 44k project to a 48k project so that you can mix in Dolby Atmos in Cubase. Now let's have a look at how to do that. Now this is a multi-track project that I got from Produce Like A Pro. It's Mary Spender's Someone Better. And she and Warren Ewart from Produce Like A Pro have graciously provided these multi-tracks for everybody to use. So I'll link the video where you can download these multi-tracks in the description below, as well as Mary Spender's excellent YouTube channel. Check it out if you don't know it yet. But the bare recordings, unmixed, sound like this. Sounding great already for unmixed tracks. But if you now look in the pool of Cubase, Ctrl P, you can see that all of these tracks were recorded at 44K sample rate. Now, how can you now convert this to a project with a 48 kilohertz sample rate, for example? And you can go to the regular place where you set the sample rate in Cubase, project, project setup. And over here, you can see that it has been set to 44K. So let's imagine that we want to change that to 48K. So if I now push OK, Cubase now asks you whether you want to convert the audio files to the new rate as well. So obviously yes, we want to do that, otherwise you get the same problem that I showed you last week where you have audio files with the incorrect sample rate in your project. So let's convert the audio files. And Cubase then asks as well, do you want to keep the source files in the pool directory? So you can choose to keep the original files in the pool directory as well. But let's be radical and let's just replace them, assuming that we still have a backup of our 44k recording project elsewhere. So let's replace them. Cubase warns you that you cannot undo this. But let's be brave and proceed. Now Cubase then asks me, do you want to keep the audio files at their sample positions? And in this case, because all my files are starting right at the beginning of the project, yes, I want to do that because then I know they're all in the right location. But if some of your files are, for example, starting in the middle, maybe at bar nine or 10 or something, then you might want to say no here because then Cubase will keep the file starting at bar nine and 10 and will not shift it according to how many samples are now available. But in this case, let's say yes. And if we now look at the pool again, you can see that I still have the same files. None of them are doubled, but all of them are now at a sample rate of 48K. If I look at the actual files on disk, and for example, I can request the media info of this file, you can see that the actual file on disk is definitely 48K 24 bits as well. So all the files have been kept, they've just been converted to 48k files and the project is still as it was before, except it's in a higher sample rate. Let's see if it still sounds the same. Some might say I like a winter love and yes, it sounds perfectly fine. So if you also like these quick tips videos, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I publish another video. And if you really appreciate my video and channel, well, you know what to do with the affiliate links to these stores, right? Next up, as promised at the beginning, last week's video on how to set the sample rate in a Cubase project and how to convert audio files with an incorrect sample rate. I have two ways to do that. So check it out, enjoy and see you soon. Mm -hmm.